Hey guys, welcome back to my workbench and welcome to another episode of Modeling with Dan. And today we're going to be looking at another really cool project car that I've been saving just for a video. It is a Gonix Railgun. And we're going to be turning this one to a really special prototype which I'll show you in just a second. A uh, quick backstory on this car. Uh, this is originally an old Roundhouse MDC kit. Uh, this is the version Athern uh, reproduced later on in the RTR line. So it has some basic upgrades, uh, metal wheels, better trucks, uh, fully assembled. It's got the separately applied grab irons and a couple other nicely uh, added details there. Uh, so overall it makes a really good model and the best for customization uh, in my opinion. Especially for the extent of work that we're going to be doing to this one to make it look really nice. Uh, this is going to be a really unique prototype and let's go ahead and look at the specific prototype that I've chosen to model for this car. Here's the prototype. It is car number 708-218. This one is a CSXT car and it has all the features I want to model. Uh, it's got the nicely sagged in center there. It's got the boat outside panels, lots of rust, lots of grime. Uh, some interesting patchwork and this one's going to make a really unique car to demonstrate a lot of different techniques. Uh, so I'm really hoping you guys enjoy this car. Let's go ahead and get into this. Step one is the disassembly process, and all we got to do here is simply remove the floor to get started. The reason I'm removing the floor is actually so I can do the next process, which is going to be adding a series of clamps and blocks to this uh, to prepare to uh, warp the center of the car body. Uh, a lot of these rail guns get a pretty significant sag in the center, so that's what we're going to be modeling. You'll also notice at this point I've chiseled off all of the brake rigging on the ends. This is because I'm going to replace all this with some much nicer photo etch parts and some scratch build components there to make it look a lot better. Uh, so the car has basically been disassembled here and it's ready for the next step. The first step is to obviously model that sag that I talked about and this is going to be the step that all of you have been asking me to show and here it is. What I do is I simply take a couple little blocks of wood, cut them to size to fit directly inside one of these rail guns, and you'll notice that center piece of wood is raised a little bit higher than all the other pieces and this is for a reason. Notice that block goes right on top of the car there and this is going to be the key uh, for what we're going to do. Next up I take two clamps, little mini clamps, and then I uh, pretty much add these to each end of the car. Take a look how I do this. I simply brace the car on the table, apply the clamps, tighten them down, and the thing about having that center block there is that it raises it up so that I have some teetering space there, and then all I have to do is clamp up uh, to get that nice and tight, and essentially it gives us this nice sag or warp in the center of the gondola. Uh, this is the best way I've found thus far to model this center sag. You'll also notice I've taken some cork road bed to stuff it into the side panels there and that's important because we don't want the sides of the car to warp inwards uh, for this process. What we're going to be doing is sticking the car in boiling water to heat it up and warp it and when you do this what ends up happening is the sides will warp inwards. So I've taken cork road bed, stuffed it in there to make sure that the sides are fully braced outwards and won't bow inwards. This is the crucial step for this process. Uh, so we'll take note. Alright, now on my stove I have a big pot of boiling water prepared and after it was boiled I then shut all the heat off and I was ready to go. Essentially what you do is you take the model in its cradle and then you apply the model right into the water just like this soak it for a few seconds and then pull it back out. It is very crucial and I can't specify this enough, you have to take small chunks at a time on this project. You can't just stick it in there and then keep it in there. You have to take little bits out at a time. This is the second time I'm doing this. I end up doing it for a total of three times. Little increments at a time. If I have to apply a little bit more pressure to those clamps, I can, but I want to try to maintain uh, that sag where I have it. I don't want to try to overdo this uh, because it's very easy to overdo and you'll end up actually ruining the car. So it's just little bits at a time. You warm it up, take it back out of the water, and once you're satisfied, then you can remove it and let it cool back down. Here's the final bit of the sag portion here. Again, soaked it in water. And when I was satisfied, pulled it back out, drained all the water out, and then set it aside. After I've removed all of the blocks and the clamps, this is what it looks like. You'll notice we've modeled that center sag very easily and very convincingly here on this railgun. Uh, you'll notice that the interior there is a little bent in still. Uh, that's what's going to happen when you do this, just so you know. However, keep in mind we're going to be repaneling the sides and we're going to be putting our own top cord on this car, so a lot of that 
warping will be covered up nicely and will be left with a convincing effect. Next step is to add all the styrene modifications as listed here. This is going to result in adding side panels, a top cord, and end sheets, and different other details. The first thing is to actually t uh, pretty much tackle the sides. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking a sheet of .005 inch styrene sheet. This is paper thin styrene. And I start cutting strips to size uh, to fit in the individual portions of each panel. Uh, mainly the black sections here. I'm not going over into the yellow because on the real cars that's where the floor would start. Uh, so we're only worried about uh, taking care of the sides there uh, in the black sections, if that makes sense. Once I've had a, a number of these panels cut out and prepared, then I can take a dental pick like this uh, that I picked up at Hobby Lobby, and I can go in and start scoring these panels uh, by basically rubbing this pick right up against them, and it starts to score and emboss basically the panels, and it gives you all these little den stings and certain little imperfections. It rounds out the uh, panel and gives you this really convincing little effect here. Uh, this technique was inspired by Butch Eiler. He does this technique on all of his gondolas and boxcars. That's where I got this from, and it's worked out great on all of my cars. It takes about an hour to do an entire car, but this is essentially what I came up with. Notice that I've repaneled all of the panels, including the end panel there. I've also added a new photo etched walkway there, a mimicked chain, uh, supports for the couple of lift bars, a new brake wheel, and some jacking pads there on the prototype. There's another shot at the sides there. All that will really be complemented once it's all painted up. Essentially, it's very easy to do. It just takes a little bit of time to get all the panels glued down. I just use plastic cement and super glue to glue everything in place. And while we're doing styrene modification, it's time to work on the underbody here. And I'm not going to go into too much detail with the underbody. All I do is uh, change the brake rigging around, uh, glue it in place, modify it to where it needs to be according to the prototype photos uh, with a specific build of car. I install all of the brake rigging and then add some pipes uh, and different fittings, all, essentially all the main brake rigging components. Uh, those are all phosphor bronze wire cut to size and installed. And then at that point, you can see I got them all installed there and they're ready to be painted. I've also gone ahead and painted the sides as well in preparation for decals and patchwork. Now we get to look at the weathering here, and I'm going to kind of brush over this a little bit, but show you the meat and potatoes, at least, of the weathering portion of this car. As we look at the prototype, you can see there's a lot of very heavy rust on the sides. Notice the railgun lettering is completely destroyed, removed off the car, and left over is all this rust. A lot of the yellow is faded up and peeled away as well on the ends there and on the underbody, so that's where we're going to start on this model. To model a lot of that heavy yellow chipped paint, what we're going to do first is actually add in the peeled paint effect. And we're going to use some black acrylic to start. I'm using a fine tip Atlas 10.0 brush. And I'm going in and just doing a little bit of fine dot work. Uh, just blotching the paint in here and there in little sections at a time to model a lot of that peeled paint. Uh, this is a really nifty little trick uh, when it comes to actually modeling a lot of that peeled paint on these real guns. Uh, you can usually fill in a panel section here relatively quickly. Uh, I'm still trying to go in with a little bit of detail, kind of trying to follow the prototype photos as best I can to get the uh, chipped paint uh, exactly where it needs to be uh, per side. Here you can see we're now moving on to the opposite side here, and it's the same process. I just take the fine tip brush, go in there, and apply my paint. Uh, it's just a random dotting effect, and keep in mind I'll also do this on the sill portion, on the uh, at least the yellow parts. Keep in mind we're only painting the yellow portions of this model right now. Uh, we're not going to worry about the sides, uh, anything black. That's going to be mostly rust. We'll paint that mostly with oils later on. Uh, this technique will also be used on the ends as well. I should mention that now, and both ends. There it's starting to really take shape. You just do a couple little dots at a time and build it up slowly and you get some really nice effects out of that uh, paint technique. At this point, I've gotten all of the fine acrylic paintwork done. I've prepared the patches, uh, the primer patches made out for the safety striping, and I've also added uh, the little patches for the new data there. Notice how I've weathered up the ends and the sides. It looks very crusty and blotchy, just like the real thing. Here I've added some decals, the safety striping, and the COTS block. Uh, that's all the data that I needed to add to this car. After this, it's just a matter of applying oils. And going into the oils now, what I'm using is Burnt Umber Artist Oil, or water mixable oils here as usual. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the ends here. The thing that I do with the ends is I like to build up a relatively heavy layer of oil paints first on the ends. And what I do here is I take pretty much raw oil 
and then I start working it into all of those yellow areas of the car. Also on those end panels uh, around the base of the car there, around that coupler pocket, those are going to be the highly concentrated areas of rust. And around that top cord as well, around the brake wheel, uh, just being careful not to knock off any of my newly added detail parts, of course. Uh, this is just going in, and at first it looks kind of crappy, but you'll see what I'm actually doing here in just a second. Once I've added that paint to the surface, then I can come back in, and with the brush now dipped in thinner, I can come back in and start pulling some of that paint down. And essentially the paint collects in all of the nooks and crannies, and all of the raised surfaces of the ribs, and that serves as a very good base product primer weathering with the oils. Uh, now we can work on the washes on the sides and it's the, pretty much the same process. I'm just using a flat bristle, soft bristle brush, applying the washes to the sides one panel at a time, working it in. Uh, nothing here needs to be perfect, we just need to make sure that the paint's relatively evenly covered. And at this point you can see why I've added these decals, uh, it's because I want to weather over them. I should mention here at this point as well that before I started weathering this car, once I placed the decals on the model, I sealed everything in place with dull coat. Uh, it's very important if you're going to do any kind of decal work, you need to make sure it's sealed in place before moving forwards with any kind of weathering, otherwise you pose the risk of removing said lettering, or any data that you've added. So, all this is sealed in, and I'm just going in and applying some very basic washes to the sides in preparation for the heavier weathering. There you can see it's starting to take place, and I'm going to repeat this on both sides, obviously. Returning to the ends now, I'm going to do a lot more fine detailed weathering. Here I'm doing a very heavy wash of that rust right at the tops of those ribs and those braces. Uh, that's going to be a very high concentration of rust there on those uh, little corners, uh, especially with uh, looking at prototype photos. Uh, around those panels, areas like that, that's going to be a lot of that rust buildup. So we're just going in and preparing these areas first by using the Atlas 10 brush dipped in a little bit of that thinner and a little bit of the burnt umber oils and here we're just starting to go in and add all of that rust to all of those heavy rust spots and patches and peeling paint. Those are going to be the crucial areas that we need to hit up. So I'm going in and I'm taking my time just dotting in that paint just where it needs to be, working it in place. And if need be, I can always go back in, let this set up a little bit, and then blend it back out with a soft bristle brush similar to what we used on the sides earlier. And that'll pull some of that paint down and give us some nice streaks. Uh, in this case though, what I'm worried about right now is getting that full strength, rich, burnt umber rust color on all of this rust. We really need this to look very well saturated in terms of color. So I really want to keep this concentrated right now. Um, and I'm just, again, building it up. You can see how I'm taking that brush. I get a little bit of paint at a time. Also note that I'm doing this at the edge of the table and I'm supporting my hand there uh, with a finger kind of braced against the table. My hand is essentially just supporting the model in my hands. Uh, I have the camera between my legs here, so it makes a little bit of a uh, trick to kind of support this, but I'm just bracing the model as carefully as possible in my hands here, just making sure it's not going to wiggle loose as I'm doing this. And now I can come in and start adding the very heavy rust uh, to the end at the uh, base of that little plate there and also around that coupler box. Here I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, streaky, blotchy rust peeling and streaking that's taking place. Uh, signs of the distress from all of that warpage on that end plate. Uh, a lot of those times uh, when these panels warp out and bend out, you get a lot of these really chunky patches of rust and even a mixture of fine rust streaks as well that kind of accompany them. So I'm kind of modeling a little bit of both on this car. And there I was using an Atlas uh, actually not an Atlas, that was a Citadel number no. 2 dry brush, I believe. And that does a very fantastic job of doing some of those streaks. And here again, once I do that, then I can come back in with my brush dipped in a little bit of thinner and a little bit more paint and start streaking some of that rust down. There it's starting to really uh, work out pretty nicely now. You can kind of see what I'm able to create there. Uh, I'm getting a really, really nice effect with all that rust. And then next up, I'm going to take a very frayed brush, and I'm going to start streaking on some of that paint uh, horizontally here. And what I'm trying to do is kind of streak it across that top cord, all across the data. This is going to be a high impact area, meaning this is going to be an area where whenever it's being loaded or unloaded, cranes, uh, backhoes, anything that's loading up is going to strike that top cord pretty often. And it's going to get pretty scraped up very quickly. Same process on the sides here. I'm going down with the uh, straight oils. This is non-diluted oils, full strength here. So I get full color and full detail. And I'm using that frayed brush because it gives me these really random scratches, these little blotchy patches. Uh, this can also be modeled with a coarse sponge, as far as I know as well. Uh, Panzermeister did a video showing how he did some of the chipping effects, and you can also do this on these railguns, but in this case I'm using this brush to do it. 
After I did the sides and everything else, I then moved on to doing powder work. And essentially what I did was I went in, after I did all of the oil work on the sides and everything else, modeling a lot of those uh, streaks and panel debris, scrapes, and things like that, I then went in with some powders and I started applying uh, a bright rust tone to the sides here. Again, I should mention that the car had a couple days to cure after I applied all of the oils and then I sealed this up with doll coat before I did any of this powder work. That made sure that everything underneath this powder work was very carefully sealed in place. And sorry about that, guys. I apologize for my dog barking there. She gets a little excited when she's with me in my uh, projects room and uh, I'm filming. There you can see that rust is starting to take shape. Again, I'm just using a really nice cheap micro brush. I go in and start adding these little streaks and little highlights of this rust all over those side panels. Uh, we'll go a little bit heavier on the ribs and the top cord, of course, but that'll all come here in just a second, and we're also going to be using some different brushes for that. Once I go in there with that micro brush and I get it to where I need it to be, I can then take a flat citadel brush and kind of streak some of that fresher powder down a little bit to diffuse it. And now I can go into the ribs a little bit. And here I'm using an Atlas 10 brush, going in with that medium rust, and I'm just brushing it in into those little panels. And I will work this down just a little bit with a flat bristle brush to just kind of pull some of that color again to diffuse it. Uh, these are just little rust highlights, uh, kind of focusing on where rust would really build up or have a tendency to build up on cars like this, uh, especially over time when they've really gotten weathered up. And on the top cord, I'm again using that Atlas Flat Bristle uh, 10. Actually, this is a uh, Citadel brush. I apologize. Uh, this is specifically for powders. And again, I'm using that AIM Products uh, Medium Rust. Uh, it's that nice, vibrant, reddish rust. And I'm just going in and applying it in a blotchy manner to the top cord there, working all the way down the car. Next up, we can work on the interior here, and I'm just going to take a very large flat bristle, uh, soft bristle brush here, and I'm going to apply fresh rust to the interior. Now, we're only focusing on the meat and potatoes of the weathering on this car, so I'm not going into as much detail about what I did later on, but I added a little bit of mud splatter, uh, some more weathering powders, and other different effects of the interior to kind of finish things up. And I also added some scrap debris to this to make it look really nice. And in a second, you'll see the photos, and you'll get to see a little bit more of the finished product here but this is just essentially what needs to go in as the basic weathering application uh, so I'm just applying that powder and I'm going to apply it to the ends the floor and both sides obviously and this is going to give us a really nice rust color now it's very important that uh, at this point I need to mention that I'm not sealing this powder in uh, it's applied and left alone from this point on I do not seal any of this in there's one last look at our prototype photo there of the real 708218 and now we'll get to look at the model rendition of this car. We'll take a look at this. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful uh, weathering effects here. You can see I did some final detailing to the car by adding the coupler lift bar, new air hoses, couplers, uh, weathered up the trucks real nice, and then you can see a lot of that fresh rust streaking down the yellow. Uh, you can see that really significant gondola warp there. Take a look at that. Isn't that incredible? And it was all done with some simple clamps, a little bit of wood, and some other materials there. There's that interior. You can see there's a lot of scrap debris in the interior kind of spilled around, and that's just using a little bit of sand and other materials glued in place with Elmer's white glue. Uh, later on, I added some other effects. At this point, a lot of that glue is still drying, so that's why it looked a little bit muddy in the interior. Uh, there's a look at the ends there with that nicely warped out plate and lots of that rust. And there you can see the sides again with all that heavy rust, uh, and then a lot of the rust streaking down over the yellow on this car. So overall, a really nice prototype, and it came out absolutely wonderful. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned for more content. We'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.